the movie is set in a post-apocalyptic world which has been ravaged by a deadly virus. Both men and women can contract and carry the virus, but mysteriously, it is only killing women. It has created mayhem all over the world and scientists are struggling to find a cure. The virus is very strange as it didn't originate from organisms, but rather, it fell to Earth in the form of ash. The entire world is bombarded with this strange ash, which has appeared literally out of thin air. As the months pass by, the female population is depleting at a rapid rate, hence threatening an extinction. And since women can contract the virus from men living in their vicinity, the governments around the world have started a campaign. In this campaign, the women are relocated to an isolation camp with the promise to keep them safe. But in reality, they are forced to the camp, where various cruel and painful tests are conducted on them to find the actual nature of the virus. As a result, woman has become an extremely rare species. To put it into context, a huge reward of millions is awarded to the one who can capture a live woman and hand them over to the government. Then, we are taken to a quarantine department which is rented by a guy named William. At first, it looks like any other apartment, but soon, we get to know that a female named Eva is also living there. She is none other than William's girlfriend. It turns out Eva has managed to survive so far because Will has hid her well from the authorities. He doesn't allow her to go outside or use the phone. Even if it's for her own good, Will's tight control over her freedom and movement has had a negative impact on the couple's relationship. With each passing day, Eva feels more and more suffocated in her apartment. She is desperate to go outside and feel the sun. On the 400th day, Eva reaches her breaking point. She covertly puts on a hazmat suit and runs up to the roof of their building. Soon, Will notices her and runs after her. However, before he can stop her and get her back, Eva rips off her suit and allows herself to be infected by the ash. For her, living under quarantine and watching millions of people get picked off by a mysterious virus just wasn't a life she wanted to live. Will eventually convinces her to return home, but it's clear that they are fed up with each other. Eva takes off her hazmat suit and heads into the shower, while Will breaks down on the couch. After cleaning the dirt off of her, Eva takes out a kit and takes a swab test to check if she's really contracted the virus. As they wait for the result, the couple hear multiple police cars show up outside their home. It's clear that their home is being raided, and despite their recent argument, Will rushes Eva to her room and helps her hide inside the bed. Following this, he lets the cops into the house. They search the place for a while and then interrogate Will about his identity. Here, it's revealed that the apartment was actually rented by Eva and her late friend Carolyn, who lost her life to the virus. Will confidently says that Carolyn was his girlfriend and that he built the meticulous quarantine to keep her safe. The police then ask him about Eva, to which he lies that she has been missing since the virus struck. After a while, the cops are finally convinced that there are no women in the apartment and they proceed to leave. But as the armed men exit, one of them hangs back and reveals that he knows Eva is here with him. It turns out the policeman spotted the swab test that Eva forgot on the table. The test is positive, meaning Eva has caught the virus. However, he pities the couple and decides not to alert his colleagues about her. Before leaving, he tells Will to enjoy his last few days with her. Will is heartbroken, but he is forced to collect himself as the apartment is no longer safe. Moreover, Eva wants to escape the city as her secluded lifestyle and overall isolation has almost driven her insane. Shortly after, the two quickly pack their belongings and abandon the apartment. Eva dresses up as a man, and on their way out of the city, they pull over at a convenience store. Unsurprisingly, the tampons have been made free, as there are virtually no women left in the world anymore. You would think that they'd just burn them since men are scared of tampons. But as Eva covertly tries to take some tampons, the store clerk catches her in the act. He is taken aback to see a woman after a long, long time. When Eva starts panicking, Will brings out his gun and threatens the man to keep his mouth shut. And after the man lies on the ground to surrender, the couple runs out of the store. As they drive away, the movie flashes back to the past, to when everything was normal. On the TV, a news channel reports that a rare comet is set to take a journey close to Earth. Meanwhile, Will has recently moved into Eva's apartment after years of dating. One day, as the two spend some quality time alone, some mysterious, snow-like substances start falling from the sky. The couple is shocked as winter is still far away, but when they peek through the window, they realize that it's ash. Just then, Eva's best friend Carolyn returns home covered in it. She tries to say something, but soon gets dizzy and collapses on the ground. Back in the present, Will and Eva pull over at a motel. There, they notice some sketchy-looking men with rifles in one of the rooms. However, the couple ignores them and spends the night at the same motel. The next day, before heading into the woods, Eva insists on having her last cooked meal at a restaurant. Will reluctantly agrees and they stop by a nearby diner. There, the TV reports that scientists at the U.S. Center for Rebirth and Repopulation have created an artificial 
embryo. Latest trials have seen the fetus survive up to one month, which is a historical achievement in itself. Many world leaders have praised the achievement, as this could be the most probable way of repopulation once the cure to the HNV21 virus is found. The news also reports that the federal government has increased the reward for reporting or locating live American females to $2 million. As everyone is hooked to the TV, the sketchy men from the motel arrive at the diner and are elated by the news. To make matters worse for the couple, Eva suddenly starts bleeding from her ear, indicating that her impending demise is nearing. When Will notices this, he hurries her out of the diner without even paying the bill. Unfortunately, this attracts the attention of a man, Arthur, and his teenage son, Casey, both of whom notice that Eva is a woman disguised as a man. Shortly after, Eva begins hemorrhaging, prompting Will to panic as it's the first stage of the infection cycle. In frustration, he starts reading the entire cycle to Eva, causing her to get angry. Hence, she orders him to stop the car and then runs into the nearby bushes. However, when she reaches a bit further, she becomes exhausted and starts crying. After some time, she returns and the couple continue their journey. Soon, they venture into the woods in search of their final destination, which turns out to be a secret waterfall. Will is distraught by the thought of losing the love of his life, but on the other hand, Eva is trying to be as cheerful as possible, wanting to make the most of their final moments together. The movie again cuts back to the past. After Carolyn is fainted due to her contact with the ash, Will and Eva immediately rush her to the hospital, but soon, she is declared dead. As the couple wanders around the place, devastated, they realize that only women are being infected by this mysterious sickness. Realizing that his wife's life may be in danger, Will sneaks into a prohibited room in the hospital and steals two hazmat suits so that they can protect themselves from the ash. Then, through the back entrance, they run away. Once they return home, they call Eva's father, Mahesh, who happens to be a doctor. Mahesh reveals that even at his place, the ash has wreaked havoc and thousands of women have already died. He then suggests the couple set up a quarantine and Will immediately gets to work. He starts securing the house with furniture, germ-resistant plastic, and various other safety elements. Eva is very nonchalant about the security measures, while Will is more serious and careful about everything. He stays up all night to boil water and in the morning, he goes to the store to fetch packaged food. He also sets up ultraviolet lights around the house that allegedly kill pathogens and germs within a couple of feet. Moreover, he always stays away from Eva, knowing that he can transmit the disease to her. Several months pass by, but the virus continues to claim more and more lives. Eventually, the government requests all women check themselves into government-controlled medical facilities for the Embryo Project, which apparently intends to find a way to repopulate the Earth. The government-controlled media tries to paint a rosy picture of the detention centers, but the internet is soon flooded with conspiracy theories about horrible experiments being conducted on women. Therefore, Will refuses to hand Eva over to the government, and he builds a bed where she can hide from the authorities as a precautionary measure. Over the course of the next few months, Will becomes extremely paranoid, and one by one, he seizes all of Eva's freedoms. He even forbids her from using her phone, fearing that the government is listening to them. With no one else to talk to, Eva turns to a secret all-female online forum to keep herself company. Will again tries to stop her from using the forum, but she refuses to listen as the female survivors in the chat are her only support system. Unfortunately, the survivors in the chat also continue to dwindle in number, giving Eva a sense of hopelessness and despair. Back in the present, Will and Eva walk for hours, and along the way, the latter continues to take pictures on her camera. At night, they light a fire and set up a camp. Eva longs for intimacy, and she asks Will's help in taking off the duct tape she tied around her chest in order to pass off as a man. However, Will is cold and distant, and after helping her, he returns back to his tent. The next day, they continue their journey, and Eva continues to try to cheer her boyfriend up. Will finally begins to lighten up, and he teaches Eva how to shoot. On the other hand, we see the father-son duo from earlier, Arthur and Casey, driving in the woods. They want to claim the $2 million reward by capturing Eva, and it turns out they have followed the couple into the forest using the map they left at the diner. Soon, the two also venture into the forest armed with rifles. At night, Eva and Will again set up a camp, and as they proceed to make love, she unexpectedly suffers from seizures and convulsions. Springing into action, Will cushions her head and helps her relax. The next day, Eva wakes up early to fetch some water from the river. However, when she returns, she notices Arthur and Casey holding Will hostage from a distance. They have tied him up tightly against a tree. Shortly after, Arthur eventually locates Eva and chases her, but she manages to escape. Left with no choice, the father-son duo continues to hold Will hostage in hopes that Eva will return for his sake. At night, Casey stands guard with a rifle while his father sleeps. Eva conjures a plan of her own, and in the dead of night, she shows up 
undressed. She seductively approaches Casey. The teenage boy is still broken over his girlfriend's death, and having not seen a woman for over a year, he gets distracted by her beauty. This allows Eva to knock him out cold. After this, she frees Arthur from the tree, and wasting no time, he takes the rifle and shoots Arthur to death in his tent. The movie then again cuts back to the past. It's day 400 since everything went bleak. Eva has several missed calls from her father on her phone. This worries her, as they had agreed not to call each other on the phone due to security measures. Realizing that something wrong has happened, she insists on speaking to her father, but Will only agrees on a video call with the camera and mic disabled. On the call, Eva's distraught father reveals that the government took her mother, despite her being over 60 years old. He then breaks into tears and expresses his wish to see his daughter. But when an emotional Eva attempts to turn on the camera and mic, Will intervenes and hangs up the call. As a result, the bereaved Eva loses it, and she lashes out at him for keeping her trapped. She then holds him at gunpoint and orders him to go away forever. After Will reluctantly leaves, Eva notices a visual of the waterfall on her laptop. It reminds her of tranquility, love, and freedom, so she decides to venture out. She puts on the hazmat suit and rushes to the roof of the apartment complex. Back in the present, Will and Eva continue their journey, and they eventually make it to the secret waterfall. There, the couple embraces each other, knowing that they'll always be soulmates. Will kisses her, and she snaps a selfie, prepared to die as she bleeds out, losing energy, but in an atmosphere of happiness and relief. Eva feels that she was burdening Will, and as she awaits her death, she smiles, knowing that her beloved can soon go on to live a proper life. See you tomorrow, guys. I'm gonna go take a cold shower now. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.